Everyone seems to enjoy a chicken dinner. But a chicken dinner deluxe with a gourmet emphasis, ah, that is something very special. So let's give a very special party. I love to give a party. I know. That's why everyone loves your party. Even though you do spend hours planning and cooking, you always seem to have fun at them yourself. Let's have our chicken tarragon. It's easy to cook and easy to serve attractively. But I'm afraid we're going to have an argument. You like small broilers split in half, or just the chicken breast, basted with that wonderful sauce of tarragon and wine. I like the same sauce. Maybe I'd use vermouth instead of white wine. But I'd select plump little squab chickens, one for each person instead of your broiler halves or breasts. An argument is bad for digestion. So let's make the sauce first and then decide. At times you're quite reasonable. Then you mean we can have the chicken my way. You never had any doubt about that, did you? You are very sweet. No, I never did. Let's change the subject back to the tarragon sauce. Well, I make it in the morning this way. Soak two teaspoons of dried tarragon in one and a half cups of dry white wine. Must it be white wine? Don't you sometimes use sherry? And as I told you, I prefer French vermouth. I'll do it any way you want. My one purpose in life is to please you. So take the dried tarragon and steep it for several hours in white wine. Strain the wine, then use to baste those little squab chickens nestled side by side in a deep skillet. But first I would rinse out the inside cavity of each chicken with a little brandy, the way the French do. That would be delectable. Let's do it sometime. Now I'll explain how to cook those plump chicken breasts. They are really a little more deluxe than half broilers. Money means nothing to you, does it? Not very much, I guess, but I'm mad about love and fine food. Me too. Then you will help me with the party, won't you? You always tell me I mustn't work too hard when we give a dinner. You say you want me to greet the guests looking refreshed and bewitching. You know I will, but I didn't say bewitching. I said lovely. Oh, well, this lovely dish is cooked on top of the stove. Allow one breast for each guest. Season it with salt and pepper, then brown lightly in butter in a large skillet. Now for the tarragon sauce. Pour a little over the chicken breast and simmer gently for about 40 minutes. Keep basting with the wine, never too much at a time, but always a little more and a little more. The wine and the drippings will cook down together and become slightly thickened toward the end. Can you imagine the flavor of that sauce? You know something? It's really a very feminine dish. Beguiling, subtle, and sustaining. How pretty. Would you really want me to use the squab chickens instead? Too late. Stick to your way. But serve each breast on a round of toast and garnish with green grapes all on a beautiful platter. And we serve thin noodles cooked in chicken stock with them. I'd add lightly sautéed sliced mushrooms and a few chopped fresh chives just to give a little color contrast and to add one more touch of flavor. See, you are getting things your way after all. And canned asparagus from Argentoy, France, green and thick and luxurious. Argentoy, as you know, is famous the world over for its superb asparagus. How do you want to serve it? Just heat and serve with maitre d'hotel butter, very easy to make. In a mixing bowl, soften one half pound butter with a fork or wooden spoon. Add a little salt, white pepper, chopped parsley and lemon juice. There it is, a blessing for the asparagus. Shouldn't we have another bright colored vegetable, say carrots vichy? You see, I can cook in French, too. Often you cook as well as a French woman. Not always. If you were perfect, you would not fascinate me. Will these carrots fascinate you? They are scraped and cut into one-half-inch slices, then cooked in a saucepan together with butter, water, sugar, and salt. Cover, bring to boil, then lower heat and simmer until tender. Shake the pan occasionally. That's a beautiful vegetable, a delicate golden color, to go with your luxurious green asparagus. Are you painting a picture or planning a dinner? A good cook does both. You told me that yourself. I just wanted to test your memory. And do you remember the way you split rolls, butter them, and then put under the broiler until they are crisp and slightly brown? Awfully easy. Yes, easy. And we won't need butter plates. The less cluttered a dinner table, the more relaxing it is, I think. I think we ought to have a pleasant wine with that chicken, say a light claret or a chill dry white wine. Or it could be a good rosé, too. Do you prefer the rosé? No, I don't. But many of our guests do. What guests like is the rule for a continued party, you know. They like my salad, too. They should. I never knew anyone to get each leaf so clean and free of sand. And that oil and lemon dressing is just right for this dinner. For this dinner, I'm going to toss together dark, green, crisp watercress and grapefruit sections. Doesn't that sound refreshing? Sounds almost frolicsome. Well, you can frolic in with a dessert when the time comes. Flaming bananas with vanilla ice cream. It's a decidedly masculine dish. 
you will enter like a victorious gladiator. I'll prepare the bananas while you get the other dishes ready. Like, like so. Peel and slice four just underripe bananas in half lengthwise. Sprinkle generously with lime juice. Butter an ovenware dish, a deep and handsome one, and place in the oven a few minutes to preheat. Otherwise, the rum won't ignite. Then lay the bananas in the hot dish and sprinkle one quarter cup brown sugar and a combination of one quarter teaspoon each of ground cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, and grated rind of one orange over them. Dot with more butter. Bake ten minutes in a very hot oven. Just before serving, pour over them about one quarter cup high-proof rum. Put a match to the rum. It will flame dramatically before your wide-eyed guests. And we'll serve it with vanilla ice cream. I'll scoop the ice cream into balls ahead of time and keep them in the refrigerator in a glass bowl. Can you taste the contrast? Flaming, spicy bananas and the cool smoothness of ice cream. Yes, it's wonderful. Now here we are at dessert, but we haven't discussed the hors d'oeuvre. They don't have to be elaborate or fussy, but there must be plenty of them and good cold drinks to go with them. And lots of time to enjoy them. I hate to be rushed through the hors d'oeuvre by a nervous hostess, don't you? You know I do. Time, remember, is the essence of this pleasure. And it gives me a chance to slip quietly into the kitchen to see how things are doing on the stove. While I stay with the guests. One of us must always be with the guests. Isn't that the basic rule of hospitality? Naturally. Now, how do you like this idea? My horseradish dunking sauce in a beautiful deep green bowl and another bowl of iced vegetable relishes, endive spears, raw cucumber sticks, hearts of celery, carrot sticks, and rounds of raw turnips, all for dunking. And the sauce? Easy, and can be made way ahead of time. Mix together sour cream and an equal amount of mayonnaise, a little curry powder, and a strong dose of prepared horseradish. You'll be surprised how much horseradish you need to give the sauce a distinctive taste. Can't we have a bowl of fresh shrimp, too? Everybody likes them. Don't I always do just as you suggest? I'm glad you told me. Now, those chicken breasts with the tarragon sauce. But we've already discussed that. Yes, but I've changed my mind. Change your mind? Again? Yes, I thought it over. Decided those plump little squab chickens would be better. Do you mind? 